everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Last month I took a poll on my Instagram about upcoming videos that you might want to see and it was originally intended for a video slotted in right before Christmas but you guys all overwhelmingly told me that you really wanted to see all of the fashion plates in my house to do kind of like a fashion plate tour of my house so please come with me around my house and we're going to take a look at all of my fashion plates like you see here and in fact we're gonna start in this room because you get to see these fashion plates kind of in the background of like all of my videos where I do like sit down talking videos. You're seeing them all in the background but you never get to see them up close. So I have a whole lot. I think my fashion plates range from, I wanna say I do have one from the 1830s. I'll have to figure out where that might be. But otherwise they range from the 1840s through I think the 1880s to be honest I'm not even sure what years my plates are like collectively I will have to look at them each individually and then I will tell you approximate years most of them don't actually say their exact year but because I know fashion evolution pretty well I can tell you at least an approximate year on every fashion plate and I'll probably show you some of the like fashion prints that I have as well because although the majority of my decor is plates I do also have some that are like artistic prints and they're very very pretty and I feel like you might like to see them. I am not going to show you all of the Disney decor in my house unless it just happens to show up in a video but uh, I feel like you should know that as looking at this camera right here behind you is all sorts of Disney decor especially from some Comic-Con artists and it's really really fun. Maybe I'll show it to you at the very end of this video as a bonus and I also have Disney decor over here and a lot out in my living room as well but the rest of the studio and my sewing studio and also my bedroom and also some in the living room those are all fashion plates and prints. So let's go ahead and take a little tour of my absolutely tiny house. So let's start with my gallery wall in here and hopefully it won't get too much glare or other lighting issues. We'll go ahead and start over on this side since I know it contains one of my older plates. So this is one of my older dated plates. Now that said, I don't know if it really is original. I'm kind of thinking not because it's actually on fabric. But as you can see here, this is from Godet's Americanized Paris Fashions, 1848. And we have two lovely dresses here, very indicative of the 1840s with those bodices and bonnets. And this is actually all decorated over in thread. So it has been hand tinted, I think with watercolor. and has been all embellished with thread, which is really, really just beautiful. To its left, we have a plate from La Mode Illustre, which is from the 1870s. My guess is probably about 1874 or 75, based on the fullness of the skirts and the hairstyles and even those little hats, well, that she's wearing on the right. But I absolutely love this blue striped fringed confection. It's one that I could definitely see myself wearing at some point. She has really interesting hanging sleeves as well. And then this one over here is kind of in that polonaise style, like hearkening back to the 18th century, which I think is so cute, though I'm not as fond of the color scheme. Up here above the 1840s plate, we have another La Mode Illustre bustle plate. This one I think is actually a bit earlier because both of these bodice styles are actually a little bit indicative of the 1860s. So I think this is very early 1870s, despite the fact that she really doesn't have that much fullness in her skirt, you can see she has more. So yeah, I would say this is in the first few years of the 1870s. Next to that plate, we have one from the Moniteur de la Mode. This one does have a lot of text down here at the bottom. You can pause it here if you want to read it. It's all in French, and unfortunately, it doesn't say the date. Now, that said, I do believe this is the 1850s because of the rounder, softer skirts, the smaller skirts, and also because of the styles of the bodice here where they've got the pagoda sleeves with the really full white undersleeves. Well, she at least has the pagoda sleeves. I really like the purples on this one and the fringe at the bottom, but it's not one I see myself ever making. 
Also, you can see with this plate that this is kind of what happens when I go to frame them because I don't want to cut the edges or anything. I wind up just sticking them in a frame with no mat and it kind of looks a little rough around the edges as opposed to like one that I purchased like this one, for example, which came in a really, really lovely frame. Unfortunately, someone did cut this, so I have no way of knowing even where it is from, let alone any other information such as the year. However, I can tell from this bodice style that this is definitely the 1860s. When in the 1860s? I couldn't be quite as sure, but she does have a little bit of an elliptical shape, so my guess is probably right around the mid-1860s. This one is just lovely though. I think the colors really jump off the page. To be honest, I do wonder if this has actually been hand tinted because the colors are really so nice, but it's just a lovely plate overall. Above that, I have another plate from La Mode Illustre. This one, again, is kind of hard to tell, particularly because they're wearing wrappers over everything, but it does look to be from the mid to even possibly late 1860s because the skirts have really gotten very, like, sloped in the back. And if you remember from my 1860s Fashion Evolution video, that really happened towards the end of the 1860s. I am going to have to show you this at this kind of weird angle and I'll try to zoom in in editing because otherwise this one's going to get major glare as you can see if I tilt the camera at all because this one's so high up it gets a lot of light on it. But I do think it's a nice kind of pastoral look with the pink and green and all of those white details. Down on the bottom row, we have another one that I, to be honest, kind of bought for the frame because I just think it looks so lovely with that oval frame. The fashions themselves are really not much to write home about. These are 1860s fashions again, and this time we're looking a little bit more towards the beginning slash middle of the 1860s. She still has a kind of wide sleeve here at the bottom, as does she. She's actually wearing a non-fitted jacket, which is kind of interesting. You don't see that a ton, but yeah, this is probably like 1864, 1863, somewhere in there. Next to that, we have an early 1870s plate from Le Bon Ton. I don't think there are artistry is really the best or maybe it's just this has faded so much and discolored. Now unfortunately Le bon Ton a lot of times will give us a date but this one has been cut off. They were usually up here in the top so it was probably right about here at the top of the frame where it was cut off. But looking at these dresses here we can see that these are definitely early bustle dresses. We have a very wide shape. She's honestly probably wearing that over a crinolette. So we're looking at definitely no later than like 1874. I would say probably even 1873 or 1872 in this fashion plate. I really love the scallop bow detail on her skirt and also all of the scallops decorating her outfit, which if you look really closely, I'm pretty sure that's all piped. So kudos to that. Next to that, we have another one that you can tell that I framed because it doesn't fit the frame. But this one's quite different because it's all children. This one was actually given to me after we did our Victorian children uh, group project several years ago. I think that was back in 2016. And I love all of the details on these kids' dresses. I think they are just so, so cute. I mean, this one's from Le Monitor de la Mode and it has little labels under each of these outfits. So I, again, don't speak French, but I think this is actually a communion dress based on the word communiante. And then this one says it's Marie Antoinette style, which I guess has that crossover front like you see in the 1780s. And then this one is bluette. I don't know if that's just because it's blue. This one is Greek, which you can see with all these little Greek key designs in there. So that's an appropriate name. And then we have Edward and Pompadour. So I guess it's supposed to be a little bit Madame de Pompadour style. And way over here, this little boy is Ecosse. I don't know what that means. So if you speak French, let me know. But yeah, this was Le Monitor de la Mode. So this is one of my few dated plates. This is actually from 1858. These children are for sure wearing crinolines under their dresses, which is really cool. But you can see the date down here in the corner, May 1858. Right up above that, we have another plate from La Mode Illustre. Again, 1870s, early 1870s. This one is mm, probably about 1873-ish again. I seem to have a lot from that era, but you can tell again from the fullness of the skirts that this is first bustle. She has some really interesting sleeves going on that are really doing that kind of renaissance, in quotes, look. And then her bodice is actually 
I feel like almost a little bit old fashioned. Like it definitely has elements of the 1860s, but these ladies are definitely 1870s ladies. Right above that, we have a wonderfully dated plate. And also these are freaking gorgeous. This is honestly probably one of my favorite plates in my collection. As you can see, this is from Godet's Fashions from May 1870. And oh my God, the fashions, like how perfect are these? Look at this freaking purple stripe. Oh my God, this is one that I think I'm gonna have to try to recreate at some point because it's so gorgeous. I mean, the bodice is really weird, but like the purple stripe with the purple and that ruffly detail with those like funky box plates. And then you look at this one covered in all of the rosettes. I hate the color, but oh my God, it's so beautiful. And this blue and white, I love the color, but the dress is like not quite as interesting to me. And then of course we have the grand dame of all best dresses, which is this blue and white one. Perfect color, perfect style. Look at those bows. Look at all of that pleated trim. I mean, oh my gosh, she is freaking wonderful. And of course we've got the little girl next to her and then this lady kind of gets the short end of the stick. She definitely has the worst dress in the whole plate. But I just love this plate and I love how bright these colors are as well. Above that we have another kind of faded Le Bon Ton plate. This was definitely owned by the same person as the first Bon Ton plate. You can see like it's got the same frame and everything. And honestly, it's probably a really similar year as well. Again, we've got really early 1870s here. You can just tell by the fullness and everything. Honestly, this could be as early as 1870 because of how full these dresses are and like the style of her bodice in particular. But yeah, it's lovely. I love this turquoise trimmed one here and sort of how that pale blue radiates under the white. I think that's really beautiful. I'm going back down to the bottom row for one of my creepiest fashion plates because wow, look at that face. Yeah, some of these, the faces were not drawn very well. This is probably the second worst one I have in my collection. Just wait till you get to one in my sewing room. Someone has handwritten on here 1873 down here. I'd say that's probably pretty accurate. We have a lot of fullness here. But this one is starting to get a little natural form looking. So this could be a year or so later, to be honest. This actually even has some elements that honestly kind of, I feel like place it in the later bustle period, like coming out of natural form. There's a really very tailored look about this, which was very popular in the 1880s. And she's got like frizzed bangs, which was definitely an 1880s thing. However, their hats do seem a bit more 1870s. So it's hard to tell for certain since this is just a handwritten date, but I do kind of feel like it's a bit off. And finally, we have the last plate in here, which is Monitor de Dames et de Demoiselles. Yeah, I don't speak French, but this one is lovely because we've got a few different looks. I just love her sort of winter wear look in here with all of that fur trim that's gorgeous. And she's got really nice trimming on her dress, though I hate the color. But let's be honest, the winner is definitely this little girl. That is stunning. Like I would wear that so totally. The colors are perfect for Halloween. Look at all of the zigzags on everything. I mean, that is just absolutely freaking gorgeous. And the cute little braids. Yeah, I would totally wear that. Honestly, I could probably see myself making that sometime in the future. That is everything in here. So let's go into the sewing room. Hi guys. We're moving into the sewing room right now, but I just wanted to point out how gorgeous the sunset is first. Okay, back to fashion plates. Also, I want to apologize if my voice sounds weird. I filmed this on two different dates and I'm now getting over a cold. This plate right here is from Le Moniteur de la Mode. It has tons of writing down at the bottom, but unfortunately not an exact date. However, looking at these ladies right here, I think what we are looking at is very early 1860s, possibly late 1850s. And I'm saying this because of the dome round shape. You can see on the red, she does have like a little bit more in back than she does in the front. So we are maybe starting to move towards elliptical, which is why early 1860s could be a thing here. Very, very wide skirts. We have sleeves that are set very off the shoulder here. And we also still see the pagoda sleeve on this ball gown. So that's why it could be very late 50s, could be very early 1860s. Next that I do have these two little decorations here, which are not fashion plates, but they were portraits that were kind of put into this cute wall decoration. Don't remember where I got them, but I love them very much. Behind my sewing room door, I keep my very creepiest fashion plate. This 
is why it's so creepy because this child has a very much adult face and I hate her and uh, you're welcome I guess but I love her dress I think it's so beautiful. This plate is from Journal des Demoiselles and we are looking at a relatively early 1870s plate here. For one thing when you look at the little girl's dress this is hearkening back to the 1860s frankly more than anything else I would say. It looks very round and has a lot of that geometric design but here we also have just really soft looking bustles. They're not very large though so we could be going as late even as like 1873 here uh, but this is definitely the first bustle period. Over my sewing machine we have Cinderella but then we also have three very small fashion plates. You can see the two on the outside are framed the same. They came from the same place. I did not frame any of these, but I love these frames. I honestly do not know what magazine these originally came from. The only text on the bottom says something like Leroy LMP Paris. I have no idea. The same text is actually also on this one, so I believe these were from the same publication. Presumably this one was also the same, but it is cut off under the frame. On some of these, it's a little bit hard to tell exactly when they did to because of outerwear. I am just not as well informed on outerwear as I am on the regular garments. You can tell she's wearing some kind of a jacket here. It's kind of blending in with her blouse underneath. She's of course got her large jacket there. From this plate right here though, if these three plates all date to the same approximate time, this plate is 1850s. You can tell that by the pagoda sleeves. This is later 50s, obviously after the invention of the hoop skirt, I would say, because these do look like larger skirts. But you do still have a pagoda sleeve here that is starting to decrease in size, but that's definitely a 50s hallmark. And then same with over here, we have plates that are rather hard to determine because of the gorgeous velvet outerwear that this lady on the left is wearing. And then she's just rather indistinct over here in her white ball gown. But I believe these most likely all date to the same, especially since the text is the same on the left and the center one. So we're looking at 1850s. Within the sewing room in an old American Duchess box, I also keep all of my unframed fashion plates. So I'm gonna pull those out. We'll take a quick look at them together. I believe that these were sent to me by Sarah from Pins Abigail. So thank you, Sarah. Hopefully I'm remembering that correctly. I don't know exactly when these date to because they are costumes. So you can see this is the costume of Madame Boulanger, Roll de Maria. And I think, I mean, it looks 1830s. So I think this is contemporary 1830s. And then on the other side, we have another costume. This time it is Mademoiselle Prévost, Roll de Suzanne which you can see up here under the tape. So again, I think this is like 1830s does 18th century, but that's what we're looking at there. Not a fashion plate, just a lovely photograph of this 1890s lady right in the middle of the decade with that size of sleeves. And then here we have a gorgeous bustle plate from La Mode Parisienne Peterson's magazine. The date has unfortunately been cut off right here at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that, but it says September and then it says 187 something with a rounded top and the rest of the number has been cut off. So by looking at this, my guess is we're looking at 1872 because this is definitely early bustle, could be 1873 because her bustle is starting to flatten out, but hers is very pronounced. Hers is a little flat too. So it, it's hard to tell because we've got two flattened bustles, two, well, three, I think really very pronounced bustles. So we're looking probably at 1872 or 1873 here. Next up is another Le Monitor de la Mode. This one is definitely going to be in the 1850s because of these huge pagoda sleeves and also just like the quantity of ruffles over here. We are looking past 1855 because of the crinoline size, uh, but probably somewhere around like 1857-ish is my guess on this one. And lastly, not a fashion plate, but an old publication. This is my fancy dress catalog from the 19 teens. I went fully over this Weldon's catalog in my historical Halloween videos. It is definitely problematic in many places, but it's really a cool thing to have. Right outside of the sewing room, we have another not a fashion plate, but I found this at a vintage sale. It is actually painted silk. So it's painted silk and it was kind of like framed with this cardboard, gold cardboard but I think it's so gorgeous. And we are looking probably 
at the late bustle period I think is what it's going for but I think that this was actually probably created a fair time later my guess is probably 1920s maybe even as late as 1950s and so I think that we have some influence on the styles I apologize for the lighting in the hallway it is not great but we have three plates here who were all given to me by my lovely friend Barbara and these are all 1860s plates so you can see here like her hoop skirt has definitely turned elliptical shape she also got the nice fitted sleeves here so it is very much an 1860s plate all three of these are from the mode parisienne and someday i would love to recreate that blue and white stripe here's our next one sorry for the little reflection of me that's going on here but again, we are looking at the same time frame. I believe these probably all came from the same publication, in fact. So we're looking at 1860s for all of these. Probably the mid-1860s, like around 1865, 1866. You can also tell that there's a lot of military influence going on here. It could be as an influence of the Civil War. I'm honestly not sure. We are around that era. But you can see the military influence on her jacket right here. And honestly, even this feels very militaristic with all those little tabs. It almost reminds me of a ship, to be honest. But yeah, again, we're looking at mid-1860s. Now on to my very messy bedroom. But luckily, I'm only showing you the walls. We have several fashion plates. I have two of these that are matched frames. Don't remember where I got them from, but these have a date. They're Good Days Fashions for March 1870. And you can see here how we really are bridging that gap between the crinoline era and the bustle era with how full these skirts are. They're definitely bustle shaped, but they are pretty darn round. And I love all of these in here. I think they're just gorgeous, but my favorite is this dark blue one over here. Moving on from that, I'm going to come back to these middle two right here because first we have the match set for that last one. So again, we're looking at 1870. Beautiful, beautiful drapery on these bustles and the outerwear because this is December. So we're looking at all of this winter wear. The outerwear is just fantastic. And then when we slide back over to the middle, we're actually looking at what I believe are the 1840s here. First, I've definitely got a little 1840s lady up there, not a plate, just like a print of art. And then we're looking at an 1840s plate here. I don't know any details about this. There is something that looks extremely faint writing right here. All I can make out is fashions. I can't make out anything more, but we are looking at 1840s. It's hard to tell exactly because we're looking at writing habits and I'm not as well versed on them, but you can tell just by like the hairstyles and the way that the bodices fit and the skirts fit that we're looking at 1840s. Again, not fashion plates, but I do keep these two little Regency ladies right over here by my vanity as well. I think they are so beautiful and the frames are just perfection. Found these at an antique store. Likewise, over my bed, I have another match set of not fashion plates. These are like art prints. This one is very costumey, so it's hard to tell when it might have been from or when she was going for. This one is definitely going for a mid 18th century look. And speaking of 18th century, I have two very large prints over here. These I got from the silent auction at Costume College several years ago, but I love how like kind of pastoral they both look. It's just like very calming and soothing and beautiful. And finally onto a fashion plate that if you have been following my channel for a while, you will be extremely familiar with because I made this dress. This is La Mode Illustrée, although mine didn't have a date like under the matting, I did find out it was 1874, which is rather surprising looking at the velvet dress because it does look so round, but then again, she is sitting. I got this from my friend Denise and obviously fell completely in love with the burgundy velvet ribbon dress. If you wanna check out how I made that dress, I will leave links to videos down below. We have moved on to the living room. I actually had to pull this one down because I have lights all over my living room and they are reflecting everywhere off this plate. But we are looking at La Mode Illustrée again. I believe we're looking at very, very late 1860s here, though it's hard to be certain because she's wearing kind of an outerwear look and she has a giant poof of a ball gown on that she's sitting in and just looks like a giant poof. But they do definitely look more round than anything else. And I think all of the hallmarks in this are looking like very, very late 1860s. So again, not a plate. This is actually a photograph of a theater production that a friend gave to me. And this one we're looking at early Edwardian era, possibly like 1903-ish of, of this production. Also not a plate, but I have two Ladies Home Journal covers that are over here. This one is from February 1912, 
and this one is from May 1909. Trying not to get as so much glare on there for you. And finally, the last plate on this tour is in my dining room, and it's very glary again. This is from Mira de Motes, and this is going to be like an 1850s plate, later 1850s. You can tell by those really, really hugely puffed lower sleeves with a very drop shoulder, and then the multiple tiers on the skirts, and the very round fullness that signifies that there's crinolines under there. I know that was a bit of a random video, but hopefully you have enjoyed looking at all of the fashion plates that I have in my house. Basically, my rule when I'm collecting fashion plates is I find them out in the wild. I did buy, I think, like two plates maybe in this room from eBay when I was first setting up this background because I needed to fill a few holes. But my rule is that they have to be inexpensive. Like, I think... I maybe paid as much as 25 for one, but generally they have to be like 15 and under and ideally already in a frame. Because as you saw, I have several fashion plates that are waiting for frames and I just never seem to be able to find frames for them. Um, fashion plates are very odd sizes. So if you are getting into collecting fashion plates, just to warn you, fashion plates are very odd sizes. I mean, you can see that even from the ones that are right behind me here. They are very strange sizes. And I know like I would feel horrendous to cut one <laughs> so like when I have the unframed ones I have to find a frame that it fits it exactly basically and does not require me to cut it and also I don't do custom frames because those are expensive so they come from the thrift store and it's just a chance if I can find the right frame if you are getting into collecting fashion plates you may want to try to find framed fashion plates for sure but it's really fun to just like go through antique stores or occasionally estate sales and just look for fashion plates. A lot of times they're kind of hidden. Uh, frankly, a lot of times at antique stores, you're going to find fashion plates that are like in a corner stacked up against each other and, you know, a whole bunch deep and you have to go through them. Or like the antique store near me, there's one booth that has them like in a case out on the side. So of course you have to go ask the person for the key to like find the fashion plates and their price. Or of course there's the other thing of sometimes you just don't realize as you're looking through a booth at an antique store that there are actually fashion plates way up on the wall while you're looking at all the trinkets around. So make sure you look at the walls because you never know what you're going to find. But I do have a really fun time collecting them. I have definitely not been actively collecting them lately because this wall is fairly full. I mean, I could go lower. That's that's for sure. I could go lower, but I do have to put a couch in here sometimes when guests come over, so I can't go that much lower. I think I think I can't go lower than this one that's over here. But yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed this really, really random fashion plate tour of my house. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and other random costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram, that's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, and Laura. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing! Since I mentioned it in the beginning of the video, if you made it this far, this is the Disney art that is behind my desk. So the four princess prints over here, this is all from the art of Nikki Ward, who I will link down below in the description, but I love her prints. And then this middle one, as well as the little figment card below, this is by Ben Bird. I got all of these from Comic-Con and I think they are just absolutely wonderful. I've put a few of my Disney pins on this one. I have tons more pins in the living room and even more in a bag. Uh, this one's actually just from Hot Topic, but I thought it was cute and it got me free shipping on an order. And then this is again Ben Bird right there. This was actually a wonderful gift from my friend Shane Smith, uh, who does graphic design. He was in our cast of Into the Woods. And of course, Lane and Dora. <laughs>